I'm Dr. John Iskander. Welcome to CDC Beyond the Data. I'm here today again with uh, Dr. Uh, Janet Wright, who's been our guest before uh, on Beyond the Data. Uh, Dr. Wright is the Executive Director of Million Hearts. Uh, many of our viewers will know that that's the uh, nationwide effort to prevent a million heart attacks and strokes over a five-year period. Um, Janet, we heard at today's Grand Round session some, some great examples of uh, specific uh, programs being implemented locally, but can you remind us sort of what are the main fronts in this war against cardiovascular disease? Yes, John, it, it, it is a battle. And um, what we're doing is having Million Hearts serve as a framework to bring all of the power and majesty, really, of public health, but marry it up with the changes that can occur in a healthcare setting to improve cardiovascular outcomes. Clearly, there are things that can happen in the, in the clinical setting. Um, a lot of those involve uh, health information technology. Can you help our audience understand the link between electronic health or electronic medical records and preventing heart attacks and strokes? Right, it does seem like a leap, but um, really the healthcare work is uh, focused on getting excellent in what we call the ABCS or ABCs. Um, so that's aspirin for those at risk, blood pressure control, the C is for cholesterol management, and the S is for smoking cessation. But if you're in a busy clinic, it's very difficult to track the progress, uh, not only of an individual patient in getting excellent in those ABCSs, but more so the whole population of people who might be at risk for heart attack and stroke. So the electronic health record can serve as a uh, clearinghouse or a, a member of the quality improvement team, if you will. We've seen that high performers use their health information technology or their electronic health records to um, develop a registry of all their patients who have high blood pressure and then to proactively reach those patients who are not in control. Similarly, uh, they can comb through their electronic health record data for people who should be on aspirin and aren't taking it or might be at risk for a heart attack due to an elevated cholesterol and might not be on the right therapy. S similarly, you can detect smokers and then uh, make sure that you're getting them the interventions that can help them quit. You, you've written very eloquently about uh, people with these conditions, with hypertension, for example, who are hiding in plain sight. Can you tell us what that means and how that should be fixed? Well, a as a practitioner, it was an eye-opener for me. There are 36 million people in the U.S. with uncontrolled high blood pressure. And what we found when we looked at those 36 million uncontrolled is that many of them have actually been to their usual source of care, their normal provider, twice or more in the previous 12 months. So those folks are actually in the system, their pressures are being recorded, and yet for a number of reasons, they're not being detected even within a healthcare setting. So that's certainly important for those with care. We, we anticipate with changes in the healthcare system, more people are gonna have access to care, but at some point, people walk out the clinic door and they enter the community. What are the community, if you will, pillars of Million Hearts? Yes, and they are uh, very strong pillars, and we're already seeing, as in today's Grand Rounds, examples of communities that have uh, really taken uh, health in their own hands and made big changes. So some of the things communities can do is to create smoke-free policies so we're not exposed to uh, smoke accidentally. Um, secondly, they can adopt food procurement policies that make a wider choice of healthier foods available. Um, and then uh, the exercise paths and then encouraging um, the training of folks in self-monitoring of blood pressure. You know, we've used a medical model for blood pressure, but when people can go into uh, community organizations and have their blood pressures checked, but have those uh, data returned by the individual back to a treating provider, getting advice, uh, then we've closed the loop and we've actually helped that individual manage his or her own blood pressure. So, it, so we have both uh clinically based uh, activities to you know, improve uh, people's risk factors and lower their risk of heart attack and stroke. Uh, but again, there are also things that the community can do 
uh, really to improve the health of everyone. And, and John, just to your point, it takes both. This is not an either or. Um, you know, many of us, um, we're, we're very happy that we only spend about point one percent or point oh one percent of our time in a medical setting. Most of our lives are lived at home and at work and out in the community. So we do want to fire up all of those very powerful levers uh, in a community setting. So I think many people are going to want to know what's being done in their state, in their community, and potentially what they can do again in their clinic, in their setting. Uh, what are some of the, the resources uh, that people can go to to seek that information? Well, one of the things has just gone live in the last couple of weeks, and we referenced it in Grand Rounds today. It is a Million Hearts Clinical Quality Measured Dashboard. Now, currently what we have on that dashboard are measure sets around the A, B, C, S, but they are distributed geographically. So we have a data set from uh, HRSA's health centers, um, another one from HEDIS, those are blood pressure, I'm sorry, ABCS uh, measures from health plans. Um, and then CMS has a quality reporting system that shows how providers are doing on the ABCS in the patients that they're caring for. We look forward to using other data sets and then people can go to the website and actually look and see what's happening in their community. Bringing to mind the saying, what gets measured gets done. Absolutely. Well, thank you. Thank you very much for joining us today, uh, Dr. Wright. Please join us next month for more Beyond the Data.